All right, we're recording. Um, let me, uh, is that the document? Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, cool. I was going to do the same, but I will share it anyway. Um, this is it. Um, cool. All right. Um, okay, awesome. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Sorry, I was reading over comments here. So um, obviously anybody be willing to, anybody's welcome to jump in here. But what I, what I wrote up was basically the background and then, you know, we got a bunch of work to do. Um, the things I saw as in scope in trying to keep the scope not, you know, not too large was really, uh, an extension of the demo I did before, but to include SMF and UPF of free 5GC instead of Core DNS and to ideally to clean it up um, such that it's a, at least does some sort of reconciliation because right now it's a sort of like uh, day zero only <laughs> or day one only where it just does a, a provisioning, but it does like the first reconciliation loop and then it's all good, but um, otherwise, doesn't work well. Um, then I have a library, John. I, I created a library for Porch that we discussed, which is client side, which basically does the diffing and the updates. And if there is a new, I create even a new package revision uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, that could be that could be really helpful. I can share, I can share that. So, but basically, it takes the pack. I takes what you did. Basically, take a package revision. But here we probably need additional resources that will be rendered, right? Which I did. So I did a few. I just I just added a namespace uh, on top, and then. But it basically also does the diffing uh, type of thing, and potentially looks then if a new package revision needs to be created, it does. It just creates a new package revision with a new update. But at the moment it's all client side, so it's all in the controller. I. I think eventually we'll have to change that, but that's one I, I, what I did so far. Well, yeah, I think that so we have. I know Natasha checked in some things on that revisioning piece in Porch, the thing she was working on, but I haven't tried it yet. So okay, if, um, it, yeah, if, yeah, okay, if that's there, okay, that's better probably. I just uh, yeah. I don't know if it's better, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so so yeah, if you can share that. That would be that would be helpful. Um, the the other pieces, um, you know. So I guess is Stephen here? Did Stephen make it? I don't see him. Uh, shoot. Um, so Stephen has some of these CRDs, which I had hoped he would have shared by now. Um, I have. They're a little bit different than the ones that I've talked about in my components document. So we'll have to sort of reconcile those differences. And um, and and so I guess the question is, what's the, our kind of execution plan? Like, do people think this is reasonable scope? Does this show value? There's a stretch goal here. And yeah. one, I, I have been talking about it pretty extensively. Um, I, I, I do think we, I don't think it's enough. I, I think the value that it shows is, if, if we just look at it without the stretch goals, it's not a lot. Uh, it, it's kind of obvious to everybody. Yeah, you can wrap some up, upstream <laughs> packages as, at, at the end of the day, it's just regular Kubernetes workloads here. There's nothing especially special about them, maybe except the the SCTP kernel requirement that's, that's interesting. But otherwise, they're just going to be talking to each other on the Kubernetes control plane, the usual IP address. I do think it's important to show Multis uh, connectivity with a set of data plane to show something networky interesting here, right? Because oh, I did expect to show Maltus with okay. yeah, I think that's, that's included in my view. I think what, what the focus really is is on this whole apply runtime and apply time uh, uh, changes. And then, but I think I, my understanding is when I read it, uh, John, that Maltus is will be will be used uh, in that not. Yes, I mean, I expect. To be, we should well we should make it explicit because obviously it wasn't yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, uh, so well, part of UPF, right? Here, here's the thing: if we're going the Multis route, um, 
just showing, again, I think showing pre-configured CNIs for this is the less interesting one. I, I did want to involve something like ENO or something else, again, also to show contributions for the community at large and participation. Uh, I have no problem yeah. doing that. I, I, you know, but like, I can't commit. And Stephen and I can't necessarily commit to delivering that, right? So as as long as we do it in a way that we're not taking dependencies, mm -hmm. um, then let's do it. That'd be awesome. What's the, I, I, what's the, what's the extent of what ENO can do? I guess uh, Dimitri was not here, but uh, but then but then so so do we? Does it does it do all the uh, all the CNI installations into slash op slash CNI bin for us, or does it does it just basically generates NADs and it and it kind of Ping, yeah, uh, annotations. That's, I mean, I, yeah. I, so it's an extra level. So instead of creating a network attachment definition, you create a different custom resource, and that's the one that will generate the next one. So I, I can I can say this, you know, just to make sure that we have something in place. If Dimitris doesn't pull through with ENO, <laughs> I have a smaller POC that does pretty much the same thing, and I can commit to that. So that's my KNAP project. It's very very simple. <laughs> it, it does exactly what I said. It takes Instead of a network attachment definition, it has a, net, a network. <laughs> and you just give it the provider and some hints. And then there's a plugin that generates the, uh, uh, the network attachment definition. Yeah. And since I own this project, basically, I can hack something together, which is good enough for the demo. So I can commit to that. I would rather okay. have some, the broader community, again, participation. But if they yeah. don't step up in time, I can fill in the gap at least to show that we that this is part of the thinking and it's something that we can do. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm fine because uh, I obviously I have any stupid NAD things that I would like to get rid of too. <laughs> so that would be that would be great if 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 you know you or or, or Demetrius uh, can can contribute that. But then you know the the integration on time is is obviously the big thing. <laughs> yeah, I th there are a few tiny delicate things there that that I could add. I mean, other than you know, not everything, is, and I always say Kubernetes is 99% declarative because there are all these like special use cases. For example, if you update a config map, it won't restart the pod, right? So there's another operator called Restarter, which I use a lot that can kind of detect that and do that. But it's the same with network attachment definitions. Multis does not work very well with it too, right? So if you update that, so, but again, for, for the purposes of the workshop and the demo, uh, you know, we're not going to show a, a very, very functional day two environment. I think everybody recognizes that's more complicated, right? But we're, we'll, we'll show as much as we can. I think that's where the stretch goals lie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so today, today that can... workflow would be done by, after FanL, there will be a package that came in from, say, 35GC. And then inside there, they would have a requirement. And that requirement would be creating NADs. So that, that, that package could contain your CLDs. Exactly. I, I really think like this is a very trivial change mm -hmm. that shows a lot of value because, yeah, instead of network attachment definitions and, and whatever we're working with, we'll do this other CR, mm -hmm. and that will generate it for us. Whatever yeah. operator. No, we I, I have a dummy CR, so I would. I, I'm very happy to replace it with yours or or yeah. Dimitri's. Yeah. So, now, so now, whoever stepped up. Great. If I may, if I may, huh? I have one question because I think it goes also to the discussion of the iPad. Basically, I, there is two ways that we can go about this here is you basically build something completely external because I think, Stephen, you will, I, at the moment, you in your package that you generate at the end, mm -hmm. you have a, probably an NAD somewhere in there, right? Yeah. I, well, I have a network resource requirement, which um, basically it, just create NADs. Somebody is uh, not muted and there's a lot of chatter. There. That's me. That's probably. He's the hodl. John, John is watching TV right now at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, yes, sorry. So, but you, yes, you, have, you have a network resource requirement somewhere in the package, I guess, right? Uh, it's to generate the package. So what happened is you have a high-level intent. The high-level intents get, right now it's a cap function. It, for the for the, for real demo, we expect it to be a controller. So controller consumes that, and then it calls John's controller, which would fan out things. So, yeah. so one of the things it downloads would be a, a network resource requirement for free 5 gc specifically. Package. So inside, they would say that I I need three NADs based on your UPF yeah. requirements. Uh, I, I need three NADs for for N three N four and N six, um, yeah. and then and then for me three five GC I know I need uh, MagVLAN, and that that would be different from some other people. So there's a default parameters inside. Uh, the user would come in and say that 
your master interface is blah. <laughs> because you know, you, when you create an NAD, you have to map it to some physical things. So, so they, they can just contribute that. Uh, so that, that is a package because it requires a user input. Um, and, then, and then if optionally, uh, but we probably do it on annotations. So at some point, um, the other thing would be the actual CLDs for UPF uh, that contains currently a CIDR for all this stuff, which I really hate. So I, I would like to point it into some sort of IP address block names. And then, and then if if some if someone in the community can write a very simple allocator <laughs> that would map the name into an into a cider, that would be that would be great. That would let, be let me talk it for you. We have one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Can we write it as find... action items? As Stephen Wong, what do you need help with? That way, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean, you could put it in the document, right? We have a so there's the document that's defining the scope. Oh, okay. But then there's there's there. a logistic. There's probably a. Either add it in note. We can, yeah. Yeah. Find a place yeah. to add it or add a section. And we that. can do like we can just do like meeting minutes for this meetings and then saying that we can start pinning AI for 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 people with I'm names sure. on it. That uh, would be great. At the end. Now, Stephen, uh -huh. one question I still had. So the the, the after you are done, do you create sep uh, you create a package for each uh, cluster probably? Yeah. Right? So the the fan out the fan out creates a package. So a dummy a, a clone package. So they clone the package uh, for. So they know for, they know to in order to to deploy a 35 GC UPF onto mm -hmm. this type of cluster, I'm supposed to download a 35 GC vendor package, a UPF common package, uh, and then maybe some other things. So right now there's no other things because the cluster is a generic cluster, so it doesn't do anything. Um, so there's only two packages right now. So 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 the final controller should be smart enough to to figure that out. So this is yeah my, my, yeah my my question was more is how does TALS uh, NAD stuff and the IPAM uh, how what is the hook uh, where should it uh, oh, okay so it? so so the the NAD package that is clone it has ah, you have a direct in, NAD package okay it's a separate yeah. package so that would be yeah easy so there, for there's some CL there's some CL there there's some CL there and then someone user as well as a default thing so so for free 5 GC is IPv LAN so so okay. by default it's IPv LAN. Uh, and then, and then user will come in and say that this is CNI version blah, and then this is master interface blah. Uh, so there has to be a user input. So, so when we drive the fifty people, they have to input something. Uh, so that that yeah. creates an NAD. So the second thing would be the UPF common piece. Uh, that, that's that's the CLD that's that the we're going to publish. Address, that's where the IP address is, I guess, right? Yeah. So, so IP address came from there. So today yeah. it's actually a CIDR. So a user, a deployment engineer, as I said during the demo, would come in and just immediately say, oh, for N4, there's only one N4 based on your UPF class. And for that one N4, I'm giving them this block, which is stupid. So what I want is um, it points to actually a name block. If that yeah. name block, uh, use uh, using the conditions. Will be will be triggering the an IP related uh, controller or, or some other controllers that would be asking for a particular size cider uh, off of that block. That would be great. Yeah, I would. Because, I, you know, because I, one of, one of, I, when we when we did a lot of demos to customers, to be honest, uh, the one big thing is they keep on saying that we don't. If we have to input IP addresses, it's it's kind of defeats oh. a lot of purposes of the automations. So, so I, would, I would like to see something a lot more generic. Yeah, sorry. I'll raise a quick question. Why are we, why aren't we doing everything with IPv6? Yeah, that's a. I think it's a bit of a detail in my view, but I I would even so so Stephen, my comment. Yeah, I would. By the way, that would be an option. We I think, I, in my view, as a reconfig, will say v6 only. I, know, I, know, I never try v6 on 35 GC. I don't even know if it works. Actually, that's that's a good okay. question, though. That's gonna be a good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. But so Stephen, what I was saying, what I was trying to mm -hmm. to get to with the following is. We should not even say this is the the block. We should just say here is the network, and you get an IP. I so the IPAM resolves it uh, to a block which is configured with, and then assigns an IP based on that allocation. Okay. No, no, I'm I'm, I'm yeah. open to that for sure. So 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 that intelligence goes to the controller, which is what I want. And then and then how we represent that to users, I'm very open, because right now is uh, for me. Input aside, is not acceptable <laughs> from, no, my, from my perspective. 100%. Yeah. And my, my question mm -hmm. is, how do you hook in? Because this is in the UPF common, right? So the question Yeah, so that's just the package. So this package, yeah. so this is probably more of a John thing. So that package coming in should have a conditions that triggers a controller that would be Correct. filling that out based on the cluster locations and the fact that it's UPF and the fact it's N4 yeah. that would be taking yeah. some IP address blocked from somewhere. So, so, so yeah. John can elaborate. How the condition can work? Yeah, we Vim and I had a long discussion about it in the in the, in yeah. the 
I think we oh, okay. comment thread. So what we'll yeah. do is we need to spin that out into a separate design document, honestly, um, for the IPM controller piece, which eventually could become the real IPM controller, which likely would want to provide some way hooks or plugins or something or separate controllers. I don't know, some way to integrate mm -hmm. with people's internal IPM systems. So, so I can. What I can tell you is, so, uh, for, for the for one, the for the point, I, was... I can. Oh, sorry. Let me. Uh, 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 I can give you the cluster information, the end, the 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 end, whatever, and then the type UPF. Um, so that's those are the information I can provide, and then and then if your controller would be able to take that and able to derive a IP block based on how many they they need, that would be great. Go ahead, Bala. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No problem. Thanks, John. Uh, yeah. So one thing, I, I, I put some factors to consider. So the fact that this is not a demo, but a work, workshop, I think, uh, um, in my view, if it's, we need to figure out how much time we are going to allocate for this workshop uh, for the attendees there, let's say one hour or something. And then we need to anticipate the issues we are going to, they are going to face into because we'll, and then based on that, we should define the scope for workshop. For the demo, it's absolutely fine. We can we can in include a few things. Uh, for the workshop, I think uh, we need to first figure out what's the time we are going to allocate for the because we need to have uh, other discussions in that on that day, like different six TSC things like that. Right. So if we once so I think they allocated the allocated, allocated time for six two right now, so an hour and twenty minutes, I think. Oh, they, they have a spot for the workshop that's allocated. It's in the wiki. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, but, but I think Val, you raised a really good point that we, we started digging into design details, which is fun, but it's actually, um, we also need to plan the logistics here. Um, so, so um, the I know you put a bunch of, of, of things here. Um, I, I guess my question is, so like I said, you guys are welcome to, to, keep, to keep meeting, but I do have to go and, just about eight minutes. So what I would ask um, is, what are our next steps here as far as how we actually execute on getting this workshop put together? So we we have to, I think we can focus on the workshop and Stephen and I can distill what we need to out of that discussion for the demo the day before. Mm -hmm. So on the workshop, yeah, the logistics piece, um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping to, do in the workshop as an alpha release, but I don't know if even at this point that's quite feasible. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, um, so, so, on that, what you're, John, you're saying is like, you know, you have some things that you call low claimed in the scope. What can you actually next the next Wednesday demonstrate as a workshop? Like saying, which of the parts are you ready with? If you were to say that, you know, uh, this is in scope, and next, next Wednesday at the SIG2 automation meeting, if you did a workshop, how would it look like? Which part would you be doing? Oh, so it's more like the readiness. Not, nothing's really ready next so Wednesday. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think I'm supposed to have a couple of weeks for this. Um, <laughs> it's a little so, bit more than that, in my view. It's not just demo. It's workshop. The people are involved. Fifty people are. We are helping. We are. We are taking along fifty people. In my view, the workshop needs to be narrow. That's that's my opinion. I think that's why I think whatever so John, John, I have a suggestion. Bala. Contents is you, enough. You, yeah. So so I have a suggestion. Um, because yeah. I, I totally agree with what you're saying. What we need is like an actual script that says, Here's what you're going to do in the workshop. You're going to set this up, you're going to run this through. This is what we're showing you. Here's, you know, when you execute this command or go click here and click there. Like, we haven't even decided are we going to run the UI or are we just going to do it through CLI? Like, we, we need to probably define that. And so, um, since you clearly have great opinions and ideas about this i would love it if you could take the next step in this document and or another document wherever you want and just say here's what you think how you think it should be done um because th that's what we need to do like to make this work i'm i can provide some code and so can tal and so can steven so can other folks on the call but we also need to organize this thing yeah, yeah. um it's for me i think it's more of a chicken and egg thing once we define the scope of the demo then we can lay out what we need to do for the workshop would that make more sense I, you know, I think like, you're right like 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 i think we need to agree on scope and mm -hmm. but like yeah. what bala is saying is that we won't necessarily cover all of this scope in the in the workshop although people like 
theoretically, it's something they can actually play with for a little while, right, on their own time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, it sounds like the decisions I've heard coming out of the call so far are one, we, we needed to make it clear that Maltus is in there, which we mm -hmm. did. Two, we believe we can do better than, than, than the, the sort of placeholder stuff that Steven has done. Mm -hmm. Yes. So far, by integrating something like Eno. And we need, uh, well, people would like to see either the IPAM piece. I, I, that's what I heard. I'm not sure if that's true, but I actually put in the stretch, I put two things that demonstrate the same machinery. So either one is fine. Um, the first one is sort of like, you, it's sort of like what you were showing Tao with your planter thing. Like you start with like a package that, that um, has some dependency on say like, oh, these, this mouse thing has to be set up. And the, the, the controller discovers that and then pulls in that separate package. That's what this first one is, automated deployment of the CRD. Mm -hmm. There's also then the IPAM, which is like a different type of controller. It's not looking for CRs that don't have a CRD. It's looking for IPAM configuration metadata that is, hasn't been satisfied yet, right? But effectively, it's the same machinery. So the question is, do we need both of these? Do we want just one of them? And which one would we pick? Uh, um, but, we, but what I heard from the group here is that something of that nature to show more than just the simple fan out is mm -hmm. necessary to demonstrate more value. Correct. Yeah, I, here's uh, maybe a suggestion. Uh, I mean, I, I love what you did with the document. You're doing a bullet list of points, but kind of on the topic we're, we're to on our topic right now, I think maybe we can turn it into a narrative, right? Just say, rather than bullet points, just a one, two, three, this happens first, then this happens next. and We'll start telling the story and you know we'll start with the draft obviously but have an idea of what happens next what happens next and uh from that i think we'll, we'll kind of understand what what pieces connect to what what's the input for each uh stage there right mm -hmm. uh, that will right. help uh move forward mm -hmm. also totally it, I think that's the next step yeah yeah sorry um once we have the narrative we can decide on what to include in the workshop and what to be pre-built, pre-deploy, right? Because I don't mm -hmm. I, I don't think the workshop with 50 people will, I, I mean, I'm not trying to be putting down people, but with 50 people in a room with 50 machines or whatever, the entire demo scope may, not, may be too much, right? So we can narrow, like here's the to overall demo, we ran it, we show it to you, and now here's the major pieces that we would like you to work on. And some of the dependency are pre-baked for you. Would that make sense? I agree, yes. Yeah. yeah, I think that's right. And once we have the narrative, then we can decide which of the pieces are, like we talked in chat, in Slack about like, oh, should we have a shared management cluster and then individual VMs? Like, I think we're, we're kind of pre, mm -hmm. pre um, uh, uh, you know, premature there. Like, I think you're right. Let's define the narrative once we understand the narrative clearly, which is built on the scope, right? That's why I sort of started with the scope. Yeah, but yeah. but I would love it. Anybody is welcome to. I, I heard Bala is eager, but if he's not yeah. willing to volunteer, that's fine too. But anybody is welcome to jump into that document and start adding, hey, here's the, the suggested proposed narrative. And, um, you know, I'm going to be at KubeCon next week, but I will be trying to move this forward as well because a whole week is like a like 20 30 percent of the time we <laughs> it's have a very yeah so um you know so i'm gonna try and keep this going I'm putting in as much time as i can on it yeah i'll, I'll take a stab at it john i'll work with tal internally uh, uh awesome and then obviously if the uh yeah I'll, I'll take a stab at it then we can we can make, we can make it obviously better sounds great awesome um Okay, I'm gonna drop off. Do you guys want to keep meeting, or um, or should we wrap it up? I'm gonna drop as well. I'm in the training all of all of this week. So I think uh, we 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 have homework, everybody. Well, it is <laughs> before the week. Um, yeah. I don't. Stephen, do you want to talk about that uh, the whereabouts thing, the IP address management thing? Okay. That might yeah, yeah, we can do that. I can, you know, I can. I can. I can. I can. I can not. I can. 
I can stop the recording. Okay. Actually, let's, let's stay a few more. Yeah, on behalf, and, uh, yeah, on behalf, on behalf of off, it, it will stop automatically, but um, okay. the recording. So yeah, I, and okay, awesome. Then I'll see you guys later. This is this is exciting. I think it, it's super great to see the community like coming together and working on something together. And I hope that through this we start to get our towards v1 infrastructure <laughs> in, in place so yeah. we can do this more and more in the future all together so yeah, yeah. so awesome thank you bye-bye all right thanks john bye. 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 thank you bye okay uh, go ahead so in general one oh the recording is not ahead, yeah uh, no, no no so so we can we can physically stop it so oh, do, okay. do you want to keep so, recording or do you not want to keep recording however <laughs> there's no secret yeah keep recording it's fine Coming, uh, for some of the folks that is coming to the meeting, I'm looking and uh, looking at this from the outside, right? When you for folks who just come in whenever the new initiative is uh, introduced, like Nephew back in uh, June, and when they're actually coming to O and E, mm -hmm. they're going to remember what happened at the summit. I mean, I know a couple of my friends actually showed up at the <laughs> Google summit, and it was like, hey, how come you are here? You know, and he's also in the space. Um, there is a certain value proposition and that is being uh, sort of being advertised. And I keep, I do continuously see on LinkedIn about Nephew being like set as the next thing that is going to come. So hopefully that still fits with what was actually mentioned back in, uh, you know, June and are <laughs> probably, you know. Hey, uh, absolutely. Right. Look, there's, there's a lot of press interest in, in this too, right? And, um, I, I, it's going to be, this is like the next public workshop, right? It's not a Linux Foundation mm -hmm. press release. This is actually showing progress. So mm -hmm. I think it, uh, we have to be very careful about what value we're showing. Mm -hmm. And because um, they're, they're expecting to that narrative original one, at least some parts of it, and then say, hey, these are all things coming. We have been discussing this a lot in pipeline. That if mm -hmm. I'm an outsider, I would be like, oh, OK, uh, that fits with what they're doing. Hopefully, there's a tie up. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm, uh, maybe I'm saying the obvious things here, right? But they shouldn't be like, oh, man, they committed something back then, and now they're taking a sudden 180 degree shift. What are they really doing? Yes. You know, we, we want to make sure right. that uh, something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're, we're all, uh, yeah, we're, but the, it's not just our group. It's the community as a whole, the TSC. They're going to have to be updated on what we're doing too and approve it. You know, if we're going straying too far from what they think the mandate is, mm -hmm. uh, they absolutely have a, a veto capability here, right? That's why right. they're the TSC. Of course. Mm -hmm. I need to jump off, but uh, Stephen, for anything that you need help with testing your thing and trying to deploy it, <laughs> there are things I can try to probably. I'll reach out to you on the on Slack. Okay. In the in the wider channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could yeah. Could with that. Yeah. Vish, let's. Let's talk about this uh, ourselves, but I, I yes. do want to create an environment maybe where we can actually have uh, Nephew running for us yeah. with KPP mm -hmm. installed and everything. So uh, yeah, we'll Thank discuss you. this ourselves. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Awesome. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> to the to the technical topic, you know, uh, I asked before, you know, if if we really design everything from the start with IPv6 and test that it's possible. You're right. We have to check how if, if the upstream components work. I think they do. I think I checked FreeGC at some point. Because I, I have a rule mm -hmm. right now. Every project I start, I start with IPv6 first. OK. Because that's, a that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I'll agree, I'll agree with you. Yeah. And you, believe, you, you, you would not believe how many broken things out there are right? that they mm -hmm. will not work. They assume IPv4, which is terrible. But at least you know what doesn't work. Um, I think that's also kind of important for us. I mean, IPv6 and dual stack is fairly new in Kubernetes. But I can tell you in Red Hat, all our customers and partners ask about it all the time, IPv6 support for, for the whole stack. Um, but also, it, it exactly might solve our problem here. If we, if we use IPv6, we might not have this issue of CIDRs and, and mm -hmm. uh, range and things like that. Maybe. I don't know for yeah, sure. I, think I disagree with I, that. Yeah. I, think <laughs> I do agree with IPv6, but not yeah. to the side of it. <laughs> and IPv6, but we might have more flexibility here. And remember, too, when you create the cluster, you can define the control plane range, the CIDR for the control mm -hmm. plane or whatever. But that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Other thing, I, I shared with you a link uh, in the chat, too, and I put it on the meeting notes of a, a really nice component that a colleague of mine uh, worked on called Whereabouts. 
And it is exactly, I think, what we just mentioned. It is a cluster-wide IP management uh, IPAM plugin. So <laughs> rather than per machine, you can really distribute it on the cluster. It's, it's, it's a real simple project, actually. It doesn't, you know, it just keeps some internal state of what was assigned and what wasn't assigned. But I wouldn't use it in a production environment necessarily for right. managing anything. <clears throat> it might exactly solve the issue for us here. So, uh, okay. yeah, for demo, that's fine. I mean, we just want to show actually having some thoughts on this direction. Yeah. Um, yeah and then, and then maybe, maybe if we want to know, we have to actually build a real thing. I think um, that the key thing is here, and I do agree, Tal, is that we use that whereabout as the backend. The thing what we have to do is how do we integrate? Because today it's really CNI, I so built this plugin. But I, my point is IP addresses here. I probably in your demo right now, Stefan, it's mainly you only use it for the IPs of the interfaces of Multus. In reality, yes. there are IPs within the UPF. There are IPs. So that's why mm -hmm. where my comment was IP, I for the demo right now, I do agree. Let's make the bare bone <laughs> right work. But in mm -hmm. reality, uh, of a UP, I knowing how you even as a Maven stuff work. They have IPs all over the place, not just purely on the physical, uh, on the virtual interface, but attached to the network. They have also loopbacks. They have pools. They have a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that's that, a, that, uh, can, I, can I say something? Uh, IPv6 is great, but we also need to. I, I think what I mean. I just wanted to understand what you mean to say. You meant to say support both, right? Because otherwise, because a lot of these CNF vendors, they are the deployments. Somebody, some some things could still be in IV4. I think I think that's I, I want to understand the spirit of your statement. Basically, you're saying support both right from the beginning. Oh well, I, I think usually if you work with IPv6, then IPv4 is much easier <laughs> if you make it working with IPv6. But I think well, correct me if I'm wrong, but my view is the following. I think it's not bad to set a precedence that your demo is using IPv6 as a basis, exactly, right? Yeah. Because then at least you, I think that's what you're trying to do, Tal, and I, do, I fully agree with you, because what happens in most cases, all the demos are with IPv4, right? And people just copy paste, and that's it. If we set a stage that yeah. the demo, I, if of course it has to work, but if we set the stage that IPv6 is the first uh, thing that we show, it doesn't mean that exactly, IPv4, yeah. we, will not, we will not show IPv4, but at least right. we set the stage that, hey, it's it's already done. Uh, don't be yeah, worried. It shows that we're forward thinking, right? Because uh, yeah. it's it's a question that everybody asks. I mean, we should not be using IPv4 anymore. <laughs> for for uh, ten years now, I think it's been a, a thorn in our side. If our, if all our systems were IPv6, a lot of issues would be much easier. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Please, on go ahead. Quick question. I just look at the free vi free five GC repo. And the UPF and SMF config start out YAML start out with um, you know ten dot zero zero something, so it's obviously IPv four. Do you know where you saw the IPv six? Well, I'm I'm assuming that they're just using the Linux stack underneath uh, as okay, a library, okay. so it, it should work. But I, again, you're right. We we definitely need to we need to test it. Yeah. Don't make that assumption. But uh, here's another thing, Stephen. Um, I won't share another repo that I did, but it's it's um we do have an interesting day two issue here because th there are these any files right you know that that free GC, free five GC uses, and we're probably going to use a config map right to to set them up yeah yeah so we do have a, a tiny little day two detail to to have right because we're going to use IP addresses and not service names right DNS names for the host I'm assuming. Because yeah. if we're using service names, then we don't even have, we still have to check IPv6, but we're not actually giving addresses. So we're using DNS, internal DNS for discovery, which is what it's for, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So in that case, we yeah, don't config, actually. The, the, config, the config for 35GC is, is an actual IP address <laughs> that you have to pin into the config. Can we give the, the, the internal DNS name for the service? Can we use services on top to handle the discovery? Because if we do that, then day two is very clear right because the the service can change you, you can handle redundancy and everything um using that's that, from right? the outside that's from outside access or internal access so the so the idea i guess the scope as as, as john's document said is there the two network functions that we're going to spin off uh, as a right. result of this workshop um they probably will be on different clusters that's the plan right now but then your know, community can converge on this um and then if they do um 
you know, the the N4 communication between SNF and UPF um, would be discovered somehow because this BGP won't be running. <laughs> There's no BGP on 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 pre cloud GC. So this this is basically a static config by telling them that this is the UPF and SMF go ahead and ping it. <laughs> that type of thing. Right. So if if we, if we can use DNS names, obviously, you know, we'll have to define an ingress too to the other cluster, and then there's some outside DNS maybe that that we're using. So that's mm -hmm. one way to do it. But if we are using config maps, something has to update that config map with the correct IP address after. Basically, sorry, I'm, I'm going a bit roundabout here, but we have we have to talk about discovery, right? Mm -hmm. How uh, discovery happening? And if we're talking about day two, there has to be ongoing discovery and reconciliation, right? Because if that IP address changes, then the config map needs to change. And mm -hmm. we have to use something like that restarter operator that I mentioned that will restart it too. So I mentioned yeah. all this because I went through this before. <laughs> and yeah, I do have I a repo. That will be our constraint by the way the UBF or the free 5GC uh, works, not right. because if it cannot, I, this assumes that it can work with a DNS instead of an IP address. And I'm afraid uh, that this That's is probably not, okay. not a right assumption. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, that's, I think. Yeah. So that's. Yeah, so if, yeah. if it would, okay, I do agree, it's a good way forward, but I'm afraid uh, it's not. And uh, that means that you cannot rely on DNS to do that resolution mm -hmm. and do service discovery and stuff like that. So yeah, and, and, and the, scope of, the scope of the demo and workshop, I'm not sure if we do any IP address changes uh, dynamically <laughs> for people. Well, it, I, I mean, it, would, it would be to test this issue, right? Um, mm -hmm. yeah, we have but you know, this. It's manual discover. Even in the workshop, or half a step where somebody has to look up the IP address and update the config map, that's already kind of a step that we would want to uh, maybe avoid. Yeah, but, so but I, I think this is I, a technical thing, but we're talking about these right now. Yeah, so, but I think yeah. my, my understanding is on how we are resolving it uh, at the moment, and maybe it's not the ideal solution, but the management cluster will say, I need a free 5GC and I need an IP address, right? If you haven't mm -hmm an IP address manager, which basically ensures that there is no overlap, right? And mm -hmm. allocates it. And when when you render it from the management cluster, the IP address is there. And mm -hmm. then it goes to the... To the uh, yeah, so, the, so I can I can tell you the operator I wrote uh, for as, free 5GC. Such, but it, by, the time, by the time it gets the field, it is, a, it is a resolve IP address. So, it's so in, the in, the middle, in the middle of that, in management cluster, you can always do a name resource. But then, by the time you download this, the 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 CL for 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 the for the uh, for the target cluster for the workload cluster, that free five GC operators expects an IP address. Yeah, we're not doing. Yeah. We, we don't expect. So the, yeah, the resolution okay. happens in the management server. So when it comes down, it's already resolved, and the config map yeah. has the data. So I, mm -hmm. the problem is, of course, now if the IP address changes on the management cluster, you have to give it a new config map. And probably there might be an issue in updating the yeah. config map. Well, so right now the config map is generated by the by the operator. So they're they're yeah. high level yeah. intents, well, not, not that high level anymore. There's there's slightly lower level intents that goes in, uh, and then it generates the config map. So it doesn't do day two. So because config map requires a re, you know, resetting the the UPF pod, which I haven't done yet. Um, so so I I would love to have some day two demo, but obviously it's not going to happen, <laughs> given the you know the scope, and given the time that we we allocated. Um, definitely something to think about moving forward, uh, but then right now it's a flat config map that sits there and that's it. <laughs> we don't we don't reboot the the pod um, updating config maps. So updating probably works, but then not the rebooting pod. I haven't I haven't implemented that. Well, you, you know what? There's we have a few unknowns here. There's probably it would be very easy to check and see if you know we can work with yeah. a DNS name and because if we can offload mm -hmm. that discovery somewhere else and that it all also handles day two automatically because the IP address changes. The lookup will immediately. Uh, that's the beauty of DNS. It's very built-in discovery. <laughs> um, as long as DNS works, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Uh, it's not trivial, but it's definitely easier than any other discovery system because your IP stack 100%. probably already uses it. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So for me, I I'm trying to understand the very basic scope of the demo. Which mm -hmm. is UPF and SMF talking, SMF talking, pinging UPF, right? Well, bring them up first. Bring, uh, bring them up, and then, um, and then, and then, and, and then, able, able talk would be a bit of stretch. Yeah. So hopefully, they will work. So, so mm -hmm. if we start with that, and then we can check which one is done, and then we can double click, and then say, 
okay, for this, bring up a discovery. We want to use DNS versus IP v6 versus mm -hmm. IPv4, depend on time remaining. Yeah. Yeah. V6, V4 is also yeah. an item. So, so if we can do it that way, that. we can decision tree, branch it out, and then look at it as, as a whole and say, okay, we can do X, Y, and Z mm -hmm. and not A, B, C kind of thing. Well, that's what I'm hoping yeah. to get yeah. to. So, we, uh, right. And, uh, but we also, and need also, one of the most important thing is, as a part of the narrative, we want to also show them on the way how we are doing differently. I mean, anybody could say, they, I could do it using different ways, yeah, like exact drugs. same thing, yeah. right? Yeah, so, yeah. So, so exactly. So we need to, mm -hmm. part of the narrative is show them the principles of uh, development here, configuration as data, KPT, and mm -hmm. then uh, uh, KRM resources, how we are making use of those, making showing them as a part of the narrative or showing them as a part of the step is also important because the end goal, like Al said, uh, it is it's done it's done in different ways already so we want to show them mm -hmm. this is the new path we are taking this is how we are developing this how we are doing it and mm -hmm. uh, uh that's why i i think that no, is no, we, we we do we do want that for v1 for, for v1 so 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 obviously the big thing is any day two changes uh, uh will be able to reconcile uh and then and then any resolutions of uh, uh um hardware resources uh, uh, and cluster resources and infrastructure resources, you should be able to reconcile. Uh, and then interdependencies between network functions should be able to reconcile. Yeah. Um, so yes, those that those are all things that Helm would be a terrible things to use to do, um, whereas supposedly we should be able to address. But then again, November, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no I, I don't know. I don't know how I how my thing came across to me. Mm -hmm. this, the end scope can be narrow, but more important thing is to show them how philosophically different uh, approach we are taking here. So, yeah. uh, so it's I think in terms of scope, whatever we have for the scope is fine. Sometimes I even feel you know with fifty taking fifty people along with those steps or whatever mm -hmm. we need to take. I, I think yeah. we have more than enough on our plate. I think it's it's what I feel. Mm -hmm. Uh, but mm -hmm. what I think more important is is show them not only what it is, but how we are doing it as a part of the workshop mm -hmm. because that's very important yeah. because that's what is different and that's what the, that's what is the value add Nephew is bringing to the table. Yeah, the, my my demo probably takes if I run it, I will probably take about five to ten minutes. It's not that long. Um, the the good thing is it doesn't require rebooting nodes like SRIV, no policies and stuff like that, uh, or, or or things like this. So so. You know, in terms of the length of demo, no. So, in terms of actually, people, how how many inputs uh, do the participants actually have to do uh, to move the things forward before before spinning up the um, the, the the number of functions? Yeah. Um, I you know that that could be something. So we yeah. we the big thing for me always is uh, uh, the permission problem <laughs> um, when you when you put it on cloud uh, that could that could take some time. So if we if we somehow figure that out very quickly. Um, yeah, we uh, the... we definitely want to make sure that everything is set up, so we don't waste time on installing. We definitely things. don't want to waste time there because you know it, it can yeah. easily be like not happening. <laughs> it's just by yeah. you know you you can log into Google Cloud. That would be sad. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, Stephen. Yeah, I think it's very important to demonstrate that we maybe are able to deploy UPF, let's say, with a, f a few input from let's say a service provider. That's key for me. Huh? That's really key also to demonstrate the key value from Nephew to the communities to, to, to demonstrate that. And as you said previously, if we can avoid the state to, to configure IP address uh, manually, it's also uh, let's say a key point for, for us as service provider. Mm -hmm. I can tell yeah. and I just want to, yeah. yes, to add, Stephen, I, I said previously, I'm very uh, willing to test. Uh, if you have some seed code, uh, we, are, we are willing to test it as, as fast as possible. Uh, uh, to to help mm -hmm. you to progress and to progress uh, within the committee. Yeah. So uh, do not hesitate and to share when you have some code already. And... Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, Stephen, it's on you. Share your code. <laughs> Everybody's waiting. I know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I was, yeah, I was supposed to do that before this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll definitely do it after over the weekend for sure. Um, anyway, Stephen, I had one more question for the the scope. Uh, we are. I think when I, when you did the demo, I think you attached, you have three uh, Voltus interfaces, right? Yes. Do we 
uh, assume that they are all attached to a, let's say, a separate private network, or they're all for the for the demo. So, so, so given that Eric, given that Eric is here, um, so <laughs> I, I ripped that off from Orange. <laughs> so Orange, okay. Orange has a uh, has a uh, uh, a, home, a set of home charts for for free five GC, basically spring up free five GCs and yeah. and even spin up a, a UE ran sim and be able to make a call off of that. So we're we're yeah. very far to get there. Uh, but then yeah. I'm, I'm my um, my deployment specs, uh, and even the uh, the IP table setups were were based on uh, what was done over there. Um, and then and then for this particular case, those IP addresses are probably relevant for what uh, Orange has done inside. So there, there's some 10.0, but there are three different networks. Uh, uh, so so my IP addresses are, are even more dummy. So for for the real thing, there there are three different networks. Um, so and, so yeah, the more I thought about this, we, we really need to check the use of DNS because this would so much help us. If we can define Kubernetes services for all of these, um, yeah. it'll make us, our life uh, much easier. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, it is an interesting use case in itself, yeah. which again, mm -hmm. I do have a demo I can talk about how to solve this using config maps and the restarter that will update it. So you okay. do need a component doing that discovery for you. You mm -hmm. can write it. But DNS just makes life so much easier because it's already there, right? So, mm -hmm. um, but it's and something I, we should. I, I, I honestly doubt it, but then there's something we should check for sure. It's a free five GC config thing. I, I, I don't think so, but uh, I'll, 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 I'll take a look. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember working with it, and I think it just uses the general. You can give it a host name; it, it'll work. Um, oh, it is okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, but but let's let's make sure. You know, I work with so many different ones. I, I hope I'm. <laughs> Because there's also mm -hmm. uh, open 5GS that I work with mm -hmm. a lot, and I sometimes confuse the two. They're, they're, they mm -hmm. do different parts of the stack. Yeah, so open 5GS doesn't require multis, but then it has right. It has so much SCTP requirements that it's, it's also very hard for me to bring up. It does, um, but so what's that... interesting about it that you can build it using the kernel mode. They gave mm -hmm. C flat. You can build it using LK SCTP, which is the kernel mode that okay. is a requirement for the host, or you can use the user mode SCTP library instead. Mm -hmm. So and well, it depends on when are the code uh, expecting that versus not because I think AM. But well, by the time we get to AMF, I think they expect yeah, it from the kernel. Yeah. But but there's another thing too that they use diameter also, which is a, another library, which is a very interesting library. With you know, it, it handles the diameter stuff, right? So I think it's called Open Diameter, and a lot of projects use this. It's like the only open source implementation we have really that's worth anything. Mm -hmm. And the problem mm -hmm. that it is written using only LKS SCTP. And I actually contacted the team. Okay. I, I think it was original. Oh, it's it's originally from Metaswitch, if you remember Metaswitch. Mm -hmm. So they developed yeah. it originally in the open source. Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> it was part of Clearwater when Clearwater was the open source yeah. IMS, but it's yeah. no longer open yeah, source. But the mm -hmm. library is still there and it's still used by all these different projects. Mm -hmm. And it is only kernel mode SCTP. Mm -hmm. And I actually looked into the C code. It wouldn't be too hard to change the API, but the whole project's governance is very weird right now. And I emailed them mm -hmm. and I tried to talk to them to do this. And uh, it's not clear if, you know, you probably need to fork the whole project and really take it in a different direction. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a thorn in the side of moving to user mode, because moving to user mode wouldn't make us much easier because you don't have to have mm -hmm. that kernel requirement for that mm -hmm. module. But as I said before, too, it's actually kind of good for us <laughs> because it shows us the kind of challenges we have when network functions when you sometimes do have to have kernel mm -hmm. level modules that you need to upload. So we can demonstrate mm -hmm. the value in terms of being able to handle that here, except that we're not. Okay. It's not in scope. <laughs> but this mm -hmm. definitely yeah. is part of our future yeah. scope, right? To be able yeah. to say. I mean, for, for SMF UPF, they don't need it. But then yeah. <laughs> for other stuff, then, then moving forward, we probably would need it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so OK. So uh, I guess Bala is doing the narrative. I guess I'll contribute a little uh, bit to that. Uh, I'll, I'll try. I, I need to talk to Tal. <laughs> okay. I'll talk to Tal instantly. So Stephen, I, I also I also will talk to you as well because I yeah. I want to understand the, the very fundamentals, such as what the user would do. I mean, would the to our in order to uh, I understand all the VMs will be set up in uh, Google Cloud. So mm -hmm. would the user Need to have an account to access Google Cloud, or would would that be? Yeah. So I I I would imagine prior prior to the events, we will ask for the well, they probably have already provided the IP address, uh, not the, the the email address. So so we should set up accounts for them, uh, so they can they can use that and then and then log in as that user, 
or if everyone, well, even if you share a project, it's, it's still your identity. So you still have to lock it in using using your. Uh, um, so email. so that, that's that's where I'm coming from. How do we do that? How do we get it prior to the event? We had. I I would imagine when the register is given, but I I have to check with Condon. Uh, on yeah, this. it's uh, so there are two things when the, when it's a uh, uh, when it registers. Obviously, it will ask for that. There is this nephew mm -hmm. thing that user can register. We can get from there. Mm -hmm. So should we assume mm -hmm. that uh, anything registered they are going to come? And what if it is more than fifty uh, registered? I, oh, oh, I think there's a very easy solution to this. It's something that I saw in a workshop once where they just everybody coming in get a little note with their username and password. <laughs> so yeah, we can do that too. We can do that too. There's no, there's no problem. Yeah. 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 So, so we have we had to create ahead of time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You just create a pool of a hundred of them and. And you just hand it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but the thing is, I I think what Stephen is was saying was that you needed to get that I their email address to do that. Oh, even then, so 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 as as Tao said, maybe maybe we'll we'll set up a dummy email yeah. with a with a the, the, but the dummy email that everyone is going to log in as that person. Uh, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. And then and then and then with a password. Is that, that okay, is it possible? If, if that is possible in Google Cloud, then fine. Yes. Yeah, it is because G G Cloud. Yeah, G Cloud basically. Uh, you, you when you G Cloud init the G Cloud commands, um, you can probably just tell them you are this person, and then um, then there's like an identity thing you cut and paste. So if this this email account, a, G, a, a Gmail account, maybe probably uh, is loginable by everybody, <laughs> then 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 they can all click and say, yeah, now I now I have the the credentials. Yeah, to but to we don't need to get to that level, right? They don't need Gmail because we just need kubectl. You know, we just need a kube config for everybody that they can access the clusters, right? Well, they need to log into. Yeah, uh, yeah, the they, yeah. I, I think I think that would probably be easier. So we we we'll probably yeah. work that out. So it's probably yeah. easier for them not to even have to touch that much of like a cloud G cloud authentication stuff. I, just, I I do want to know whether or not that would work though. I would I would I would have to see how it goes. I, I think the thing is I think. So are you saying that uh, just to understand? Sorry, uh, we are getting into the real. So so, so we, we, I, I'll investigate what's the what's the lowest denominator, the, the lowest uh, entry barrier. So yeah, if, yeah. if if it's possible for us, just give them a cube config, and get it over with. That would be the easiest. <laughs> and then take the yeah, cube the, config, the, put it onto that cube files and the that cube directories, and just go. And, and that would be great. Um, I think I tried that before. That may that may not be that that easy, but I, I'll I'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, we, that is one thing. The fundamental thing. The second thing I wanted to understand is how are we going to walk the user through? Are we going to show the porch UI? Are we going to show the KPT UI? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it part of the? Yeah, that's a, that's another thing. Yeah, they would they would have to download uh, KPT also as a client tool. Um, so the, I I think. In my view, if we set up a VM with all these things, that's right. So a VM with all those things yeah. installed as a client thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be better. I think we can just keep, they can just SSH to the VM, Google Cloud VM, where all of these things is already set up. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking loud so that mm -hmm. users don't have to do okay. any of those things. Uh, <laughs> The other thing is the yeah I mean I mean John was also mentioning about providing showing the showing the showing it in the form of UI, so so I I feel yeah I think this is where we need to yeah, yeah so let, we can we can we can think about that so we can we can have a UI you can have a VM that everyone log in yes. the same same one VM basically that all that everybody uh, log in and then and it has all uh, the kind of tools. Uh, well, here's what I suggest. I think Stephen is going to share his code soon. We're going to run it ourselves and go through it and generate a narrative. And I think that will already tell us the contours of what's going to be needed or to go through everything, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I think a lot of questions will be yeah. answered just by, by trying it out ourselves. OK, got it. Oh. Uh, agree. Uh, Quick question. So I... uh, the SMF, uh, what? I, I'm, I've been waiting for Steven code so I can mimic it for the SMF unless somebody mm -hmm. already has it. Um, so you have to model SMF too. So it's a, yeah. a slightly more elaborate than that. Um, yeah. So we can I can I can work with you and and, and maybe get a first version of the SMF uh, CLD. Set that out. would be awesome. I've mm -hmm. been hesitating yeah. to ask because I want to see mm -hmm. your code to see if I can learn and yeah, do yeah. it first pass yeah, myself. Yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. that would be awesome. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, let's, let's get that. So I guess, I guess that's that's what the first thing dependencies for everybody. <laughs> so let me let me get that out as soon as possible. Yeah, I, I will start putting some of these high level notes that we discussed about setting up the VMs and some narrative. Tal, we can we'll just work with you internally, put something together. Uh, Stephen, obviously, uh, correct it. I think it will need corrections. <laughs> so please, mm -hmm. please, uh, uh, yeah. please help us there. I, I'll, I'll take a first tab and we'll go from there. OK, yeah. yeah. That'll be great. Uh, I have a yeah. clarifying question for Bala. The VM we're talking about, is that a single VM share, or is it a VM per workshop member? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's, it's more of a. You, you, I could see both, both both the things could be working. The it could be a single VM with multiple users configured. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think I I, I would look up to Stephen for guidance here because it depends on how much resources you could get in Google Cloud. Yeah, I I'm worried that if you give us give out a single VM and multiple fifty people SSH into it, if we're not careful, somehow they're gonna clobber each other. Right, doing something inside a VM. So I would vote for 50 VM for 50 user, but I don't know the type of resources that yeah. we. Yeah, let me. I'll, I'll have to ask Hunter. So he 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 yeah. holds the money. This is this project is now from for for us is is currently from the product management. <laughs> so 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 they ah, have they so have the that, money. That, I have that's why and I I I I passed it to Stephen that particular question. It still yeah, depends. Yeah. And I'm going to someone else because yeah. I, obviously I don't hold money. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. but uh, but I, I'll I'll ask I'll ask. Okay. Um, I mean, right now the plan is already giving each person two VMs uh, to create mini cluster, mini world clusters. Um, so, I don't I don't know why not one more person would make that with that big of a difference. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's probably only valid for one day anyway. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, I mean, less than a day actually, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe more than a day because we had to set it up, right? Maybe a couple of days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, so let me get the code out. Let me uh, so Bala go ahead and put the narrative out, and then yeah. and then and then we'll, I'll modify as it goes. Um, and um, and we can we can write down scope. I mean the the thing that we want is someone would actually have. Uh, I mean at some very earliest point, everyone would people would already know what they're doing. Uh, um, Obviously, that's not today, uh, but hopefully as soon as possible. Uh, for example, if, uh, who's taking the IPAM? I'm not. <laughs> I can tell you that now. Uh, so that we that we won. Uh, the ENO versus uh, Tau stuff investigation would also hopefully happen very soon. Yeah, I, I can work with Dimitris and see mm -hmm. if they can step up or I can help them get connected. And if mm -hmm. they can't do it in time, I can hack something together that okay. at least uh, shows okay. something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will. I Stephen. I wanted to look at the IPAM. Just uh, I wanted to okay. see. I guess to see whether yeah. I can get it in. Yes. Or not. Yeah. Let me. Let me. Know. Let, let, let us know. Let us know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I because I you, cannot you commit yet, but I wanted okay. to understand uh, the semantics. Mm -hmm. and how yeah. Well, let's I, let's try them. Let's try two things first. First, see that it works. That Open Five GC works with IP6. That's one thing. Two, that it can use DNS names. And that will already tell us, give us a lot of leeway to, to maybe design this differently. Um, mm -hmm. Although I am worried if we didn't test everything with IPv6 yet, we're going to have a bad time. <laughs> it's <laughs> never trivial. Uh, and Stephen, I don't know how well GCE supports uh, IPv6. I mean, I think it, I know it supports dual stack right now, uh -huh. but it's probably you're not even sure. I, I imagine. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it, yeah. it too, we're still pretty new to this just because Kubernetes mm -hmm. really only recently got proper support for it. So, mm -hmm. so it's kind of a work in progress, but um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe that will be too much to do at once with IPv6 so in, in short mm -hmm. notice, but you know, it might yeah, just so, immediately so, work. So, put, 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 so if you're really passionate, you can try it, but then right now we, we should pass it in V4 only uh, uh, until you discover yeah, yeah. this is actually all working, then we can all switch over to V6. Yeah, I think Tal. I think if I, if I want, if I, if I understand Tal, what your uh, intention is, probably the spirit is we should definitely support IPv6 as a first class candidate for V1. I think that's what my mm -hmm. understanding is more than the workshop itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm just thinking it might make the multi cluster issue easier because with IPv6 we won't have CIDR. 
it's it's easier to avoid the CIDR conflicts that you have with multi-cluster things. Mm -hmm. But we can also mm -hmm. configure each of these. You know, if we have one master cluster and say fifty workload clusters set up for the or hundred, we'll need two each for the the mm -hmm. works workshop. We can pre-configure them in advance with with different CIDRs just to ensure that there's mm -hmm. absolutely no yeah. overlap with any of them. I, so we, mm -hmm. we have options, right? They're just not mm -hmm. as pretty and production ready, but people mm -hmm. will understand, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, but, last time we talked about it, we, we were thinking of using a single GKE that hosted just a single management cluster for everybody. So, yeah. So that may that may also mean that um, so yeah, the IPAM management management could be cluster scope too. So maybe it's actually overseeing all the fifty. Uh, no, no, I, uh, I, I suggest that we just need three clusters for the whole thing. We can have one management clusters and two workload clusters, and just have give everybody a different namespace. So everybody mm -hmm. will work in their own yeah. namespace. Yeah, we, we, can, we can create all those nodes and join them all together and stuff like that. That's fine too. Yeah, I, 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 one, I, think one might be, I think that might be possible too. So um, and and that mm -hmm. will be definitely easier in terms of deployment. These well, workshops so, are very so there's, there's, at least there's only one 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 deployment repo. So for everyone would just exactly <laughs> reading from that yeah. and reconcile so, over. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I think that would be possible and, and probably easiest. Instead of instead of creating 50 deployment repos for the 50 different clusters, exactly. that's yet another piece of things that have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, 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 that's that's a good thing to think about. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, so cool. All right, guys. Uh, I have a great weekend. I think uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Week so we will uh, yeah, we'll, we, we, we'll keep talking on Slack. Uh, I'll, I'll make my code available. And then also, um, I think next Wednesday, the uh, Secretary meeting, John will likely not host. But then I guess Tao will be. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to KubeCon kind of okay. last minute. I was waffling mm -hmm. to go or not. My talk was rejected, so I'm angry now. I so I don't. Mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the agenda item is uh, Demetrius is supposed to be demoing Eno. So so if if he's still game, then, yeah. then we can we can check that out but, and see whether or not he's he's going to put that but, as part of the workshop. So we we also have sense. earlier recordings of uh, demos of Eno too, so um, that we can see. It's been around for a while, okay. but yeah, I I do want. The ENO demonstration to be in the NFIO context specifically. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it we, want, be we want NFIO to be multi, multi, multi vendor. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm, I would be much happier. So I have my KNAP component. You spelled it correctly. You know, it's correct. But it's um, you know, I I don't want it to appear that you know it's all me. This is a community project. I think the more the more players we can show as workshop, the better. And mm -hmm. we also yeah. have to be careful, you know, there's in a lot of the press that I've seen, it was like, this is a Google project. No, we, I, I don't think Google mm -hmm. wants it to appear as a Google project as well. We want no, to we show no. Google is sponsoring it, pushing it in this first year, but unless it's a healthy community project mm -hmm. uh, with multi vendors, multi providers involved, it's, it's never going to succeed. So the more mm -hmm. we can show this in this first workshop, the, the better, I think it will give, mm -hmm. It, it'll build confidence and trust in the in the industry. So we, we okay. want that to happen, even yes. at the expense of maybe making it a little bit awkward at first. I think that's a very mm -hmm. it should be a high priority for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think um, okay. just my five cents. But I've been observing Nefio versus OPI versus ORAN versus some other Linux Foundation project, and I have a lot of faith in this group because this project. Because I, this is the first one, maybe I just haven't been exposed to enough projects, but this is the first one that has active telco participation. ORAN do have active telco participation, but it's all about specifications, right? And this is the first one that I see, you know, the the orange, the, the AT&T or, or, or Verizon sitting in and participating and pushing for well, that. So on, it, it might be the first one you've seen, but there have been a lot in the Linux Foundation before. ONAP, OpenO, Acrano, ODNFE, OpenMano. There have been other attempts with telco participation. I'm not going to say anything bad about why they didn't work. I mean, you can do no, it. No, I've seen those too. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah of course. Yeah. Well, call it yeah. But it doesn't. Started. The other thing I was going to say is I mean, how fast this is moving. Well, you know, we're getting a demo done. Yeah, so we're under recording here, so I will be careful with the <laughs> okay. say. But, but um, 
Uh, but Stephen knows this too, and Google knows this too. I mean, a lot of the industry is looking at Google sponsorship here and, and uh, curating of this project. It's, it's new for Google to be so involved in the space. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Google has, has done a very good job, really, and showing that they understand open source and open community and that they're really trying to get the community involved as much as they can. They're trying to kickstart it and move it forward. So it's been very good so far, but uh, you know the, the community, the, the industry is a very suspicious one and there's always worries and there's bitter mm -hmm. experiences from previous projects. So Agreed. Yeah. a lot of eyes are mm -hmm. on Google here and how well they do in terms of really uh, uh, creating a good community. So mm -hmm. um, specific points we can get into, but, but so far mm -hmm. you're right. I think, uh, I think it's very been, it's been positive. There's been positive press about Nefio. Informal conversations I've had with people have generally been positive and optimistic about this effort. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So okay, everyone knows what they're doing. So so Vim is looking into ITAM and then see whether or not he would be willing to commit. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll be opening like my code and then see how we can zip in ENOs and others into different sets of the pipeline. Uh, but Anna and I are working yeah. on SMF uh, uh, CLDs. Uh, and then and then we'll see how to bring up SMF uh, using that same pipeline. Uh, Bala will be writing a narrative uh, for us. Uh, and then we can we can have feedback on that and see what the scope is, uh, and then um, Tao is basically doing all the other things. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll do one more thing. I didn't actually <laughs> say it. But I'm, I'm going to do a test once I have your code and demo. I want to see if Planter can actually yeah. help. So I'm going to try to put Planter okay. in there as resources yeah. and see if it really because mm -hmm. uh, I see it. So, so my code, my code, as you can see from the demo, is all manual. So supposedly John is providing me with that condition stuff. That I can I can I can just cut off all the manual stuff. Um, I have not tried it, so I have to I have to see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have not mm -hmm. either. So we'll we'll mm -hmm. see. It's uh, pretty recent. Anyways, uh, the, the, the condition stuff was checking last week, so it's pretty recent. Uh, it's in yeah. port, right? It's in port. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll have a look. All right. Rest okay. well, everybody. We have a lot of work ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Have a good weekend. Thank okay. you. Thank you guys. Yeah. Bye bye. Oh, uh, Stephen, uh, ping me on Slack whenever yeah. you're ready or free. I, I'm going to okay. stop recording. <laughs> That's the most important thing. First. Oh, sorry. <laughs>